Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live in Studio B. Jerem Jordan, Dave McCann, and our next guest is Stuart Mandel, the editor-in-chief of at The Athletic and co-host of the Audible podcast. Welcome back to the show, Stuart. Good to see you, man. Good to see you guys. Okay, we'll talk about Big 12, Pac-12 stuff, but, uh, but I wanted to get your reaction first to the news that the Big 12 is going to have its own NFL Pro Day, a combine next year. Uh, seems like a good idea. Brett Yormark uh, continues to kind of do some new stuff. What's your reaction to this? It's a great idea. It makes you wonder why did nobody think of this before. <laughs> um, I've always, I've always want, uh, found it to be a very um, inefficient and probably expensive process for these teams to fly from school to school to school to watch people work out. So, um, you know, between, uh, I mean, you're probably going to get more. I mean, I would think you would get a lot more uh, GMs, you know, not just, just lower level people there. And it's just cool for the players, you know, to not all of them get to go to the NFL combine, right? That's a, that's a very um, just kind of top of the list. So it's going to be a cool experience. I think I give Brett Yormark a lot of credit on that one. Stuart, let's talk about March Madness, and we're not referring to basketball. How many times have you been asked an expansion question over the last couple of weeks? It's, it's constant. Um, it's the dominant topic in college sports right now. And, and, but there hasn't been a lot of like, firm news, or really none, I guess. <laughs> so you're just kind of filling the space right now as everybody awaits something definitive. Is it odd that, that there isn't anything like what you're describing there to fuel this thing outside of fans getting, you know, self-conscious about being left out of something? You know, one of the interesting things about this, this situation is when Texas and Oklahoma left, right, it came out of complete nowhere when they left the SEC. When USC and UCLA left for the Big Ten, it came out of complete nowhere. Generally, realignment happens in a very stealth um, secretive manner. Whereas in this case, kind of Brett Yormark kind of called his shot last July, and we've just been um, waiting it out ever since. It's a it's a very prolonged process with not a lot of firm information. So, um, you know, it, I know it, it's challenging for us to discern between what's credible and not, and on we, us in the media, much less a fan on Twitter who's seeing. Um, speculation on all, all corners and it might not necessarily be able to recognize what's coming from a credible source and what's not. What is the latest in that regard, uh, whether it be the Pac-12's TV deal or the Big 12 looking to poach or those seem to be connected? Oh, they're 100% connected. Uh, the, you know, uh, Brett Yormark has not been shy about stating the conferences, the Big 12's desire to get into the Pacific time zone, to get into that fourth time zone. We know which four schools he's talking about, um, but those four schools are waiting to see what the final um, deal looks like. And uh, the Pac-12 TV deal has dragged on and on, and the negotiations have dragged on and on, and and much to the frustration of, of everybody involved. But I do think we're nearing the finish line. The Pac-12 presidents are meeting again. They met uh, during the basketball tournament in Vegas. They're meeting again next week. The expectation, nothing's firm, but the expectation is that they're going to be uh, receiving from George Klyovkov the details of either a proposal or maybe there's multiple proposals, I don't know, and at that point they would need to approve it. If they don't, then that opens the door to the possibility that schools might leave. Arizona State's president this morning uh, out in the media being quoted as saying that, the, that you're right, they're going to get this deal, he thinks it's going to be enough, and that everyone's being uh, held together, and that that really no one's going to bolt? Is that just posturing, or do you think there's something to that? Um, with realignment, it's not It's not like it would be the first time somebody said we're, we're completely committed to the conference and then turning around and bolting um, a week later. But it mirrors <laughs> what our reporting has, has told us over the last, I would say, a few weeks, that the, the, pack, the Big 12 is really uh, kind of honing in on Colorado and Arizona specifically. I don't believe Arizona State or Utah have any interest in leaving the Pac-12. Now, if it were a disastrous TV deal, that might change the equation. Uh, but there's no, there's no, that wouldn't make sense, you know, in the marketplace. It's not like the, the TV value between the Big 12 and the Pac-12 is, is decidedly better for the Big 12. You know, I think the realistic scenario here is that whatever number they get is going to be around the Big 12s, right? Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. 
And schools that want to be in the Pac-12, there's not a lot of motivation to leave for just that. The equation might be a little different for Colorado and Arizona, in particular Arizona. I think they're, um, you know, that, that would be a basketball play for the Big 12. And of the four, my sense is Arizona is the only one where a good chunk of the fan base wants them to move because they're basketball fans. And there's no question the Big 12 will be a better basketball conference than um, the Pac-12 without UCLA. Is the Colorado move just because they used to be in the league? Because uh, generally speaking right now, not not uh, breaking the bank with contributions across the board, but certainly Dion's interesting, but that he could be somewhere else in a couple of years. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, Colorado has been the worst program in the Pac-12 since they joined. And it doesn't, you know, if you were looking at that, it's like why of that of all programs would the Big 12 be thirsting after? I think it's Dion. Uh, it fits, um, it, you know, Brett Yormark has right another initiative, another philosophy is he wants to make the Big 12 the cool conference. Dion's cool. Um, and Dion, by the way, is basically the de facto AD at Colorado. Now, if he wants to be in the Big 12, he'll be in the Big 12. But like you said, and I've been emphasizing that to other people as well, what assurance do you have that he will be the coach of Colorado when that new deal begins in 2025? I don't think it would be wise on either side to make a such a significant decision of, of conference membership and locking yourself into a long-term deal over a football coach. Football coaches come and go. Or is it uh, if we get one, perhaps we can crumble the league a little bit? I, you know, perhaps the Pac-12 could could lose two, but then add two and maintain Power Five status in theory. There's there's some notion that if they were to get Colorado and Arizona, that the other two would feel compelled to follow. And of course, the big the big targets are Oregon and Washington, right? So, if if you can get two, then do Arizona State and Utah panic? And they come, and at that point, the Pac-12 is not a feasible conference, and Oregon and Washington might feel like they have to follow suit. Um, I think Oregon and Washington, I don't think it's any secret, are holding out hope for a Big Ten invite. It's bad timing for them that the Big Ten commissioner left uh, right, right as this was all happening, and they don't have a commissioner right now. So, you know, I think in the coming weeks, we'll, we'll get a clearer sense of this. Colorado and Arizona on their own are actually... Um, if you were to look at football viewership below average in the Pac-12, so I don't think the two of them leaving on their own crumbles the conference. Maybe you go get San Diego State and SMU to get back to 10 and, and, and go on. But, you know, once it gets past two, uh, you know, I think the two things that would be existential threats to the Pac-12, one would be Oregon and Washington going to the Big Ten. I think that would be the end of it, actually. Or more than two four-corner schools leaving. Before we ask you a Gonzaga question, uh, just to follow up on that, because how can you move on as a league uh, if you're not Washington and Oregon when you've already heard those two schools say they want to be married to someone else? How do you even trust that that relationship can continue where you pass on stability, more or less, in a conference like the Big 12 where, where no one's going to be leaving anytime soon? Well... We don't know yet the details of how long a TV deal the Pac-12 is, is getting. Is it five years? Is it seven years? I, don't, I can't imagine it's longer than six or seven years. Uh, because we're right. Like, the next question is, okay, here's the deal. Are you guys willing to sign a grant of rights? Um, I think to have any stability, they've got to sign a grant of rights. If not, you're kind of like a group of five conference where the schools could leave at any time. Um, you know, maybe, maybe they put in an exit fee, but... You know, that's different to me than, for instance, the ACC, where the schools have literally turned over their TV rights for another um, 13 years. So um, that that to me is the is the biggest question in all of it. Um, are you are Oregon and Washington going to play hardball? Are they going to ask for, for instance, unequal revenue sharing? Are they going to say, look, we've got leverage here. We know there's interest in us. Um, they actually had meetings with the Big Ten last fall we deserve a bigger share of the pie, kind of like what the Florida State Athletic Director is talking about um, in the ACC. He doesn't have any leverage because that deal is locked in for so long. Oregon and Washington do. Stuart Mandel is with us from The Athletic. How soon do you think Gonzaga will be a member of the Big 12 playing basketball? A few weeks. <laughs> I mean, really? Not quick. Uh, it's, uh, it's not playing basketball, but 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 signing on to the Big 12. I think, you know, from what we've been told, 
it's very it's very it's inevitable um for a couple reasons you know one it's obviously a very attractive basketball conference two gonzaga is only going to leave the wcc if the conference they're going to is willing to take all their sports and not just men's and women's basketball and the big 12 from what we have been told has given them that assurance i don't know that the pac-12 i mean the pac-12 is just not far enough along to be able to to make any sort of assurances to gonzaga so we think Brett your mark is obviously priority number one is those pac-12 schools you know waiting to see what happens there but i don't whatever happens there i still think they want gonzaga Brett your mark is, is uh positioning the big 12 as the top basketball conference right um he, he feels like that's a way to you know you're not going to be the big 10 and sec but how do you distinguish yourself in some fashion uh basketball basketball is not does not drive the money that football does but it's not insignificant either and if you were to get gonzaga to go with kansas baylor those are the last two national champions houston is coming in they're the number one seed in the ncaa tournament right now um that's the best basketball conference and if you can add arizona too my goodness that's now you're like the sec of basketball I know that Gonzaga has been told to be ready for whenever that goes down. Um, so that kind of uh, confirms that as well, which is interesting. Regarding basketball, Brett Yormark has said he wants to, he think he can be more lucrative. He did some entertainment things around the Big 12 championships uh, last week with Shaq showing up as a, as a DJ and foods and halftime performances that are a little more interesting. What, what role does basketball have in this conversation, as you mentioned, where Okay, now now you become the SEC in that regard, um, and you still want obviously to continue to. You're essentially playing for third in football, but what role could basketball have in all of this if you add Gonzaga, Arizona, and whatnot? So obviously his background is he worked for, at the Brooklyn Nets for a long time. He's a basketball guy, um, and he has said on the record he thinks it's undervalued, uh, and and I think so. I think the long term strategy is okay. They already did their deal for for this one. But come 2030, separating them out, right? You sell football in one package, you sell basketball in another. Is that going to pay off? I have no idea. Um, basketball in general is about 20% of a, of a con conference's TV value, maybe a little bit more in some, maybe a little bit less in others. It's not going to, you know, um, get you to the Big Ten and SEC level, but it could get you closer. Certainly, that's something they have that the Pac-12 doesn't. I mean, Pac-12 basketball, I joke sometimes, might as well be taking place on, on Jupiter because all the games are almost all the games are on Pac-12 network. Um, the championship game the other day was at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. There are good teams in that conference, and it gets no exposure. So um, if that if it, it is kind of it, right now, it's kind of a race to be in third, right, to be the clear, you know, third most powerful conference, that's probably the most um, – the biggest draw they have that the, the Pac-12 does not. Getting on the, uh, you know, medal stand is always, always good. Uh, so the Big 12 plan for that. Stuart, we appreciate the time. We uh, recommend everyone check out your stuff on The Athletic and the Audible podcast. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Stuart Mandel. Uh, interesting about Gonzaga. Perhaps a couple, couple of weeks, weeks away. That's what jumped off the, the page on that interview. A couple of weeks, maybe? Yeah, and, and again, I'll mention it. Uh, I was told that, uh, you know, Gonzaga is on standby for when that could happen. Um, so that could be interesting. We thought we kind of parted ways with the Zags. Perhaps not, Maybe not. according to Stuart Mandel. I was stunned that he offended all the basketball fans on Jupiter, just like in one <laughs> they sentence. Are that's where they held Space Jam. Uh, <laughs>